Almost three years after being released and after receiving a slight backlash from some of the gamers, was this game really not that good or was the force strong with this one? What's up everyone and welcome to a new video, my name is Omar with Real Gamer Review and today we are reviewing Jedi Fallen Order almost 3 years after being released. If you are watching my channel for the first time, a like and a subscribe would be hugely appreciated. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is an action-adventure video game developed by Respawn Entertainment and published by Electronic Arts. It was released for Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One in November 2019, and it received a new-gen update for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S in June 2021, which we will be talking about a bit later into the video. The story takes place in the Star Wars universe five years after Star Wars Episode 3: Revenge of the Sith. You play with the main character, a young Jedi Padawan, Cal Kestis, who becomes a target of the Galactic Empire and is hunted throughout the galaxy by the Imperial Inquisitors while attempting to complete his training, reconcile with his troubled past, and rebuild the fallen Jedi Order. Weird enough, I feel that a new show that was released recently had a very similar story. The game received generally favorable reviews from critics and was a commercial success, selling more than 10 million copies by 2020. Although some gamers were not that satisfied as they compared it to the all-time favorite The Force Unleashed Part 1 and 2. I personally played those two games and yes, the gameplay for those two parts of the series, The Force Unleashed, might be slightly better as you get much more superior powers when it comes to the character's Force powers. Like the guy in the Force Unleashed had the power of mind control, electrifying enemies, moving a lot of things just with his mind Jedi powers, decapitating stormtroopers with his lightsaber, and he could literally crush TIE fighters with his Force powers. So I would say it is a bit unfair to compare any Star Wars games to the Force Unleashed installments as 90% of the time the Force Unleashed would win. Okay, so back to Jedi Fallen Order. The game is played from a third-person perspective. As I mentioned before, you control the former Jedi Padawan, Cal Kestis, and you start the game with having access to a lightsaber as well as a little bit of force. And you get to learn and upgrade your force powers during your progress throughout the campaign. During the campaign, the force is used in both combat and puzzle scenarios. Enemy types range from Imperial Stormtroopers, droids, and purge troopers who have been trained specifically to battle Jedi. You also have wild beasts and skilled Zabrak warriors. Different enemies are native to each planet Cal explores. The game's bosses include Inquisitors, who also wield lightsabers and the Force, bounty hunters hired to hunt down Cal, large vehicles such as ATSTs, and wild beasts like the Ogdo Bogdo and the Gorgara. Cal acquires abilities at certain points in the story, each ability allows access to previously inaccessible areas. Once these abilities are unlocked, you'll be able to upgrade them through a skill tree. The game can only be saved manually at certain checkpoints, which appear as meditation circles. At these meditation circles, you'll be able to rest, which replenishes Cal's health, force, energy, and healing items, but it causes all enemies to respawn. The game includes cosmetic collectibles that include different outfits for Cal to wear, pieces that can be used to customize Cal's lightsaber, and alternate color schemes for Cal's mode of transport, the Mantis, which is used to travel between planets. And for his droid companion BD-1, who is used to access these collectibles, as well as complete certain puzzles. With the addition of a Star Wars Day update released in 2020, players can access the Meditation Arena through the Meditation Circles. This allows them to complete combat challenges involving fighting multiple waves of enemies in arenas based on certain locations from the story mode. Completing these challenges awards the player with 1 to 3 stars. 
Depending on whether the player abided by restrictions on the character's health, for example never recovered health or took any damage, which can be used to unlock additional skins for BD1. The meditation arena also includes a battle grid where the player can face off against their own custom enemy wave, while being able to grant themselves invincibility unlimited force and other sheets. Surprisingly enough, when you start this game, you find the logo of Unreal Engine, which was a bit weird to me as most of the EA games recently are using their in-house forced bite engine. But the results achieved by the developers in this game are astonishing. But before getting deeper into that, one more good thing I need to mention, when first playing this game you actually don't need to log in into your EA account, and there is no in-game microtransactions, which was a surprise for me as this is an EA game. But a good surprise of course, and it is greatly appreciated. Anyways, back to the graphics and visuals. As I mentioned before, in this game you visit multiple planets, and each planet has its own unique visual style, and all of them are amazing from a visual point of view. The visuals and volumetric lighting in this game are amazing, and it shows in almost every level, and with the lightsaber reflections as well. And it shows especially in the beginning of the game with the train level, where there is a lot of lightsaber action inside dark train tunnels, a lot of blasters firing, and some really cool explosions. The footage captured in this video is on PC on the highest settings, but the game as well received a pretty nice update for the new gen consoles back in 2021 for the Xbox Series and PS5 which enhanced the visuals and got them slightly closer to PC visuals. Let me explain more on this part as it's slightly confusing. The last gen versions of the game had an uncapped 60 frames per second mode for Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. But given that both consoles were a bit old at the time of the release of this game, the hardware itself on both consoles couldn't quite play the game at a steady 60 frames per second. Actually, they maxed out at around the 50 frames per second marker. And coming to the new consoles, the Xbox Series X and PS5, you could have still played the last gen version of the game on the backwards compatible option. And the game, of course, given the new gen hardware, would run on a pretty steady 60 frames per second for both consoles. But the good thing is that they released a free upgrade for both consoles that enhanced the visuals even a bit further. On Xbox Series X and PS5, the new gen patch improved frame rate on both consoles and now both consoles has an improved dynamic resolution ranges for a high resolution experience on Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5. And they improved as well the post-processing resolution for Xbox Series X and PS5. As for the Xbox Series S, frame rate has been increased to 60 frames per second up from around 45 frames per second previously. And the Xbox Series X performance mode frame rate has been increased to 60 frames per second with dynamic resolution added in the range of 1080p to 1440p but it runs most of the game closer to 1440p. As for the normal mode, post-processing has been increased up to 4K dynamic resolution in the range of 1512p to 2160p but as well it runs runs most of the game closer to 2160p. But of course on normal mode, the frame rate is capped to 30 frames per second. Coming to the PlayStation 5, frame rate has been increased to 60 frames per second on performance mode, up from 45 frames per second approximately, which was almost the max on the PS4 Pro. Post-processing increased to 1440p on performance mode, and normal mode got up to 4K dynamic resolution as well. But regardless of which console you are playing the game on, you will still get a pretty good visual experience for this game. Coming to the music and audio part, I would say that Respawn Entertainment, the developers behind this game, did a pretty good job especially when it comes to the sound effects of the lightsaber, fighters, blasters, the force powers and the overall audio of the game. And of course for the music as well. Anything that has a glimpse of Star Wars soundtracks is just amazing, no argument in that. As always, I'll leave you with a few clips so you can check out the audio yourselves.
As a conclusion, and after playing this game for more than four times till now, I would say that this is a pretty solid single player Star Wars game. A game that campaign based Star Wars fans were long waiting for. Overall, it checks out all the boxes that a solid single player Star Wars game should have. If you are into Star Wars games and were patiently waiting for a good single player game in the Star Wars universe, then I would easily recommend this game if you haven't played it yet. Alright, time to wrap this up, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video or you learned something then leave a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.